Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to week 11. In this lesson, we're carrying on with intermolecular forces, and we're just going to be speaking about two specific things. And the first thing we're going to be looking at is how the intermolecular forces affect the physical properties of different substances. Now, we've kind of mentioned it before, but now we're going to be very specific. Okay, so first of all, the intermolecular forces determine the different physical properties of solids and liquids. Okay, remember we spoke about hydrogen bonding and how hydrogen bonding is because things have higher melting points and, and higher boiling points because they're stronger. Well, that's what we're talking about. Okay, and substances with large molecules have stronger intermolecular forces than those with smaller molecules. Substances with larger molecules have stronger intermolecular forces. So the longer the chain, the bigger the molecule, the stronger the intermolecular force. Now let's look at the different um, properties and discuss what they are of the physical, the different physical properties of liquids and solids and then talk about how the intermolecular force is affected. Okay, so viscosity is a measure of the rate of flow of a liquid. Okay, viscosity is a measure of rate of flow of liquid. In other words, the higher the viscosity, the slower the rate of flow. So honey has going to have a much higher viscosity than water. Okay, honey is going to have a much higher viscosity than water. So the larger the molecule, the stronger the intermolecular forces, therefore the greater the viscosity. Okay, so the larger molecules will have stronger intermolecular forces and then they have therefore greater viscosity. Okay, so therefore we can immediately tell that honey has got much stronger intermolecular forces than water. So that's viscosity and guys you need to know the definitions of all these things that we mentioned. So you need to know that the definition of viscosity is a measure of the rate of flow of a liquid. Right, next one. Density. Density is a measure of the mass per unit volume. So if you look at this picture, you can see that for any substance, gas, liquid, and solid, that the solid is the most dense because it has the greatest number of particles per unit volume. Then there's liquid and there's solid. And again, the bigger the molecules, the stronger the intermolecular forces, the closer the molecules are going to be allowed to move close to each other and therefore the greater the density. So the greater density of a substance means it's got a greater intermolecular force. Okay, next, boiling points and melting points. So the reason I'm showing you this is because of something we've already spoken about. If you look over here, you can see that here we've got water, and you can see water has got a very high boiling point. It's got 100 degrees. Then you've got hydrogen sulfide, which is minus 50, and then hydrogen selenium, and hydrogen tellurium. Okay, and you can see that it slowly goes up. But what's special about water? What's special about water is water has got hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding. Okay, and remember what we said, hydrogen bonding was the strongest of the intermolecular forces. So that is why it's got such a high boiling point, okay? And then if you look at this, you can see that this boiling point is going up slowly because these do not have hydrogen bonding, but this molecule is bigger than this molecule, which in turn is bigger than this molecule. So therefore, this one's intermolecular forces are going to be stronger than the hydrogen selenium, which again is stronger than hydrogen sulfide. That's why that's slowly going up. Right, so boiling points and melting points are basically things that you need to know about. And boiling point is obviously the temperature at which liquid turns to gas and melting point the temperature at which solid turns to liquid. Okay, and those are two of the physical properties that are affected by your intermolecular forces. Thermal expansion, oh it's how well does something expand? This is expansion of liquid on heating. Substances with smaller molecules will have weaker intermolecular forces and therefore they will expand more easily. That makes sense, hey, because if you've got a weak, weak intermolecular force between the two, then obviously you'll be able to allow the molecules to move further apart. And the typical thing that we use nowadays, and the older thermometers, this is a thermometer, and the older thermometer used to have a silver liquid in it, 
okay in fact they still use quite a lot today but they're not sold anymore and that was mercury and the reason they're not sold anymore is that although mercury is liquid at room temperature it's unfortunately very poisonous so the last thing you want is to put mercury thermometer in your mouth and then by mistake you bite down on the thermometer say you're very sick and you have a fit and then you have mercury in your mouth where this is alcohol okay and it's not don't worry, it's not all you can get drunk on so don't even think about it okay and it's red because they've colored it so you can see it so this is alcohol and although alcohol has got fairly strong intermolecular forces they're not that strong so what happens is as it heats up this will expand up the thermometer okay up the thermometer or if it cools down it will go smaller it will contract okay and this is because of your weaker intermolecular forces okay so that's one use that we use of the of the ability of liquids to expand or contract when heated next is thermal conductivity this is a measure of how much the material conducts heat okay and this works both with thermal conductivity as well as electrical conductivity if you have a metallic lattice you can see that these have got your protons and then you've got your C of free electrons okay and you can see that is these particles are very very close together so obviously they are going to very easily conduct electricity or heat whereas if you've got something that is structured okay like this it's going to be very difficult for this particle to cause that particle to feel the heat okay this will have to actually get very hot break its where it's sitting okay and then it's going to have to go and bump into the chloride ion or vice versa into this chloride ion so similarly with with being electrical it's going to not very easy conduct electricity so it cannot very easy conduct um, heat okay surface tension now surface tension is pretty cool so this is the energy required to increase the surface area okay funny definition for it this is the energy required to increase the surface area in other words it's the energy required to break the surface okay so you need to know that there are two types of forces the forces of cohesion which are the forces between the molecules of the same kind which will be in the liquid and the forces of adhesion which are the forces between the liquid molecules and the side of the container and both forces of cohesion and adhesion are the intermolecular forces so let's look at a little picture here so I don't know if you can see very well but if you look at this side here on the left there's water okay and you'll notice that it does that okay and then it carries on there whereas mercury when I put this in liquid mercury yeah it does this oh terrible drawing okay and that right so what is it showing yeah it's showing this is your meniscus it's called a meniscus and you need to know the name so let me write it down meniscus meniscus and whenever they talk about reading and they talk about the era of parallax they're talking about the fact that you need to read let's say if this was in a measuring tube you have to read if it's water you have to read from the bottom of the meniscus and if it's mercury read from the top of the meniscus the point right at the top and this meniscus forms simply because of these forces the forces of cohesion and the forces of adhesion and the reason that these two shapes are different is because the forces of cohesion okay which are the forces between the molecules in your in your water are weaker than the, in the forces of adhesion so the forces of adhesion are pulling the water up the side okay so they're pulling it up the side of the container because of these very strong forces of adhesion whereas in mercury mercury is a metal that is liquid at room temperature if you didn't know that already and what happens yeah yeah the forces of cohesion are actually stronger they are bigger than the forces of adhesion the forces of adhesion so that means 
that they actually stick, they're more likely for the molecules in the mercury to be sticking closer to each other than to be closer to the water. So they actually pull away from the glass because the forces of cohesion are stronger than forces of adhesion. Whereas over here, the forces of adhesion are stronger than the forces of cohesion which curls this general curve. And you guys, obviously the thinner this is, the thinner the container is, like this will generally be a very thin straw, the, the, the very sharper the curve will be. Whereas if this was in a beaker, and you will notice this, you can go look at a glass of water, make sure the glass is clean, and then go look and you will see a very gentle shape like that if you've got water in it. Okay, but there's a general shape like that and the reason is because of the f force of adhesion between the molecules of the water and the f molecules of the glass which are stronger than the forces of cohesion. Okay, and that grade 11s are all the, well not all, but the most important physical uh, properties of liquids and solids and how intermolecular forces affect this. So please make sure you understand it. Go learn it and then go do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a great day.